Hi, my loves. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to be talking today about the week ahead forecast for the week of December 17th, 2018. There's a few things that are drawing my eyes and drawing my attention this week that I just feel are a must to talk about and I'm putting them highlighted in bullet points so that I don't forget. Number one, it's the new moon in the sign of Cancer. This is igniting, I'm sorry, did I say new? I meant full, the full moon in Cancer. This is igniting all the feels because that's what Cancer does. But more than that, it's a combination of things that have been kind of swirling in the cosmos that you guys, if you're part of the Bahati Vibe Tribe, you've heard me mention this before. It just feels like everything is kind of coming to this one moment of completion and culmination, which makes sense because here in the US, we're celebrating the end of the year. But it doesn't matter where you are or what it is that you're celebrating. It just seems like everything kind of coincidentally is coming to this one point. It's almost like if you have been eating bad food, if you haven't been taking your makeup off at the end of the night, all of this combination of stuff on your skin it creates this one pimple. And it's right there. You just got to pop it. That's the worst metaphor, but that's what it is I'm seeing. Now, for the majority of you guys, it shouldn't be too much of a you know, negative thing. It shouldn't feel too bad, but it depends. It depends on what you've been putting your energy into, what you've been trying to feed, what you've been trying to nourish, what you've been trying to nurture. And if that thing, that one thing or these few things on and around this day, around the full moon, does not have what it takes to thrive and to survive, I just feel like it's that moment in your life where you have to make that decision and just be like, you know what, I got to put this down. I have to walk away from this. There is a completion here and it's not serving me and it is what it is. Because what I don't want is for you or for me to carry that energy into the new year. And if it's not the new year for you, I just don't want you guys carrying this energy any further. Now, there's a few things that are really, again, you know, striking my attention when it comes to this energy that's been building up. And number one, it's the fact that, and I'm really kind of deviating from my plan here as far as what it is that I wanted to talk about, but I just, you guys know, I just like to intuitively follow my intuition. I like to intuitively follow my intuition. <laughs> so Mars and Pisces is something that I've been watching because Mars is all about ambition, drive, motivation, moving forward, carrying forward, doing whatever it is that it takes and what that is going to look like. Are you going to charge forward? Or are you going to drift? And Mars moving through the sign of Pisces has really been drifting lately. And for some of us, we feel this and it vibes well with us because we're, we work really well with Pisces energy. So we don't mind kind of going with the flow here. In fact, the last few charts that I've been pulling have really been signaling, let's go with the flow and let's not fight this wave. If we fight it, we kind of get sucked into this undertow. We get kind of pulled into this current. And with Mars and Pisces, Pisces rule the, rules the ocean. So it makes sense for me even to get that metaphor as well, this like ocean energy and the importance of balancing, grounding with the energy of water and detox and release. So when Mars is moving to the sign of Pisces, this energy wants to drift. It's, I don't want to say directionless, but it's so open to what will happen, which is the polar opposite of what Mars is designed to do. Mars wants to charge forward. Mars sees something, it wants to accomplish it, it wants to um, conquer it, it wants to bring it in, it wants to reel it in, it wants to pursue, it wants to pull it in, it wants to, you know, co like conquer, achieve, win. It's driven, it's ambitious, it's flying forward. But in Pisces, again, it's like, you've been, you guys have been hearing me say this multiple times, it's like walking through this fun house. You don't know if you're up, you don't know if you're down, you don't know what you want, you don't know where you're going. You just kind of are drifting. So it almost feels impossible for us to, you know, know what we want and to shoot straight forward to it because it almost seems like things just kind of come in and derail you and push you off. It's like a gust of wind or a wave comes in. You think you're swimming this way and then you look up and you're like, whoa. I don't, I don't even know, like you're further out in the ocean than you thought that you were. You thought you were swimming parallel to the coast, but you end up further out and just, you, you know, you lift, you look up and you can't feel the ground underneath you. You're floating there and you're just like, I don't know where I am. And that initial, sometimes people are like, oh, okay, let me, you know, find my way. Other people panic. So it's different for everyone. 
But ultimately, that's what we've kind of been dealing with is this Mars and Pisces energy. The good thing about this is this allows you and it encourages you to not, you know, um, charge forward so much. So much of us as human beings, we're ingrained to, and we're wired to achieve, to accomplish. If there's something that it is that we want, what do we have to do in order to get it done? What is the plan? What is the plan of action? And then we carry that out. But some things in our lives are not meant and not designed to be carried out in that way. Sometimes it's spiritual. Sometimes it's, you know, timing It's or circumstances or whatever the case is. Or maybe it's just not in the cards. Maybe it's not in the stars for you. But, well, that's a, that's a topic for a different discussion. But when Mars moves through Pisces, it's reminding you that it's really time for you to allow things to kind of happen versus you kind of pushing and forcing it to happen. The other thing is that it feels, it really needs to kind of feel things out. It needs to move more from intuition than logic and analyzing, even though there's planets right now that are really focused on and asking you to use your discernment. But what's going to happen is on the 20th, and I know I'm jumping around the chart and I'm jumping around the calendar, Sun, the Sun representing our ego, our life force energy, is going to be trining Neptune. Neptune is a planet of illusion, but a higher heightened state of sensitivity. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to heighten your sense of sensitivity with others and also with yourself. So this is going to allow you, this is even more energy that is going to allow you to rely more on your gut instincts and to pick up on the feelers and what's going on in your environment around you and then ultimately making a decision from that as far as what I have to let go of, what I need to release, what I will not allow any longer. And that's what's bringing us to this full moon, the full moon of Cancer. And the full moon of Cancer is all about, again, you know, our, our sense of security, our, our bonds, our family, the things that we're nourishing, the things that we're taking care of, what is thriving, what is only surviving, and what is just falling apart. Cancer, the, the sign of Cancer is going to help you to in, intuitively kind of connect into that with your feels and then also work to protect it and make changes depending. And it's not easy. Like I don't want anyone to think that this process is going to be easy or that the full moon because it's positively aspected or because it looks like it's going to be positive and, and or fun or, you know, you know, bring in feel good vibes that it's going to all feel good. In a lot of ways, it's you making a, a decision on what is best for you and what it is that you want and what is going to build you up and feed you, not you feeding it constantly, giving it energy. It's like constantly, you know, putting your focus on it like a, a mother to a child. Like you constantly have your hands on this thing. Like at some point you have to take your hands off because it needs to go off and do it on its own. And as painful as that is, it still has to, you have to do that for the betterment of you, you as a mother and for the betterment of whatever it is that, you know, you're taking care of, whether it be a child, a career, a relationship, um, a dream, a, living, a situation, whatever it is. So the heart, the stomach, the breasts are all ruled by cancer. And to me, again, it's like that feeling within your stomach, the breasts, what is it that you're nourishing and giving life to? And what is it that your heart feels, you know, pulled to? Even though your heart may be connected to it, if you are depleting yourself, and draining your resources, draining your own structure, it's it's going to be no good for no, for anyone, like for real. It's just there's no life that can grow from this because you're giving so much, you're exerting so much. So what have you been feeding and nourishing um, now during the full moon? It'll allow you to see that clearly and then make a decision based upon, you know what, can this walk on its own? Can it thrive on its own? Can it survive? If not, you must let it go because at this point, it almost seems like you're kind of reaching your breaking point. Um, the other thing that's really important to notice is the fact that um, we're really talking about security here. This sense of security and developing a really firm foundation for not just in this moment, but for the rest of your life. And this is not once in a life. Well, yeah, it almost is once in a lifetime. Saturn and Pluto moving through the sign of Capricorn is so you know, it's been so slow moving. It's teaching you so much in such a small amount, well, in an extensive amount of time, but it's just drawn out. It's, it's, you know, giving you a punch and trying to break this down and build this up. Pluto rules destruction. Saturn rules construction and structure and stability. Cancer sits opposite of that and says, what are your roots? How, how, how has your upbringing 
Where is it that you're coming from? How is it supporting where it is that you're going? And when this Cancer full moon happens, everything that is weakened, everything that is sick or ill or not strong enough or doesn't want you, doesn't like mutually accept you and receive you, it's now it needs to go because you're going to, again, keep breathing life into it and it doesn't have the potential to carry forward. You're breathing life into something that does not have the potential there. And that's a hard pill to swallow, but the sooner you learn it, the more, the better, because you're not wasting your energy and exerting your time, your energy, your attention, your resources. Time, time is money. Time you, you can't get back. So the universe understands this and knows this and is really challenging all of this. And it's going to happen again with the new moon, which is going to be happening in the sign of, of uh, Capricorn. So the full moon now on the 22nd, the new moon later on in the new year, is going to help to build the foundation. And again, the, the Cancer full moon is not easy because it always connects to your feelings. I don't care how positively aspected that, that full moon is, it always has the potential to strike people in their heart. That's always, you know, it's just everything kind of comes to a head. And we're also going to watch this in our government. It's going to be interesting to see what makes us feel safe, what makes us feel secure. Our feeling, our sense of security and stability and being able to rely on and being able to be nour nourished and nurtured and being taken care of, these are things that as our, our government, as people living on Earth, are probably going to be tested during this time. So it'll be really interesting to see how that manifests itself. In your personal life, though, I'm, I can't ignore the fact that Venus, um, moving through the sign of Scorpio, is going to be um, sextile Saturn. And again, this is all about longevity. But the thing is, is that when Venus is moving through the sign, oh, and she's also going to be ne um, aspecting Neptune. I'm looking at the chart right now. The thing is with Venus, when she moves to the sign of Scorpio, she's very pas uh, passionate. She wants intimacy. She wants protection. There's a part of her that's very secret. There's a part of her that's very exclusive and private. So there's something about the relationship. There's something about spending that and your values, what is important to you, what you're sharing your time with, your energy, your resources, your heart, your body, who you're having sex with, who you're being intimate with even emotionally intimate, physical intimacy, all types of intimacy. These are things that are going to be highlighted, and a part of it is very private, and people are really starting to seriously um, take into consideration what it is that they want for themselves. And, you know, there's two sides of people when this happens. You know, you have the people who are, who are honest and speak very from the heart and from, the, from a place of truth, this is what I want, this is what I don't want, this is what I see, this is what I feel, because they're in a spot where they're, they're allowing themselves to be vulnerable, they're allowing themselves to be raw, they're allowing themselves to be open out of respect for the other person, out of respect for themselves. And then there's the other, the other people, the other party, the other 50%, maybe it's a little higher, unfortunately, in today's times, but the other, the other percentage, which is hiding and being secretive and not speaking the truth and not they don't want to be vulnerable they don't want to you know take that risk they don't they they would rather get away with murder they would rather sneak away versus having that conversation face to face because it's too intimate it's too hard for them they're not strong enough they don't have what it takes so it's it's interesting to see how this is going to work out because as venus has been moving to the sign of scorpio this energy of secrecy and privacy and seclusion and reflection and intimacy gets heightened and that could be good if the relationship and the bond between those two people is strong and significant and if both people are in a spot where they're at least trying and striving to be honest but there's again you know the other percentage that this can really bring out the worst in people this can bring out not good in people where this privacy this intimacy it's you know behind the scenes, it's hidden, it's, you know, getting what you can get when it comes to sex, intimacy, connection, maybe resources, maybe even using people. For what? Why are you using people? Why? Why are you doing that? You know, so it's just tough. And the thing is, is that, you know, I'm looking at these planets and Venus trying Neptune this week on the 21st. This should be a positive thing. It should feel positive because all astrologers are going to say, oh, you know, it's, you know, happily ever after. It's soulmate. It's this, this, uh, this desire to want to connect to people. It's heightened sensitivity. It's more blissful. It's more relaxed. And that's true. 
if the relationship and the resources and the money, because Venus rules these things, if those things are constructive, if they're healthy, if they're in a good spot, a good place, then you see the benefit of it. Then you receive the reward from it. But if what you're working with is not healthy and not strong and doesn't want to give the best of itself, the best version of itself, you will see this, you know, disillusionment. You'll see lies. You'll see deceiving. You'll see people using scapegoats and not doing what it is that they should do because, again, they're chicken shit because they're, you know, they're not, they're not, they're not willing to, you know, be honest because they're trying to control, they're trying to manipulate in a way that is bad. They don't want to let go of it because they're gaining from it, whatever it is that they have to gain. So this is why I'm telling you guys, you really want to be mindful and use discernment as far as, and protect yourself as far as who and what you're sharing your energy with and what the universe is trying to show you. Because again, ca cancer, cancer energy is, is there to protect you. Cancer naturally rules the fourth house of where you are safe in this world, where you belong, where your roots are, and they should protect you. And sometimes your upbringing does not create an environment that produces a healthy version of you. So there's certain circumstances in this life that are going to challenge you and teach you how to become the best version of yourself so that you can protect yourself and then create a family or create a legacy that is then more secure and will provide and creates, you know, a, an environment that is safe for you. When the universe shows you that this person is not safe, this location is not safe, you don't belong here, not because you're not worthy or not because you don't, you're not deserving, it's because the energy of that environment is not conducive to you thriving as a beautiful human being. Whether that be the people are toxic, the environment is toxic, the ideas are toxic, the energy is toxic, or it just doesn't support you. So don't take it as a personal thing, but get the hell out. You know what I mean? Like, you need to be thriving. You need to be good. That's the thing, too, is on the 17th, Mars will trine Pluto. Mars, again, in Pisces, is connecting you to, you know, feeling things out and allowing things to happen. So you're kind of drifting. You're becoming more aware by grounding and also simultaneously connecting. I hope that makes sense. So when Mars trines Pluto, this is ambition meeting power. This is control meeting the exertion of that power. But again, Mars is a little drifty right now. So what happens is this, it, this will help you to, if you're open to it, if you're willing, to exert your control, what it is that you do have control over, in order to change your circumstances so that it matches your vibration, so that it matches your direction, so that it matches your purpose. Mars in Pisces has a difficult time with powering you through, you know, projects or powering you through staying focused. <laughs> um, Mercury moving through the sign of Sagittarius, his head is like, you know, just, uh, just taking and absorbing in the whole world. Mercury in Sagittarius is trying to explore everything. It's trying to see, it's trying to be like, what is it that I want? What is out there? And then, okay, this is what I found. Do I want this? This is what I found. Is it valuable to me? This is what I found. Is it a resource? Can I use this? Do I love this? So that's what it is that we have. And when Mars is moving to the sun at Pisces, this, I see this as people put, tapping into their potential, but also tapping into their purpose and their soul work and their soul mate and their direction, this karmic, intuitive, God-given, divine path that you have been intuitively been guided to, guided to at this point, at, at the, this, um, this uh, crossroads that we're at. 2018, all of 2018 was a year of really testing us and pushing us in order to rectify and to create balance. And it doesn't care about your feelings. 2018 didn't give a fuck about your feelings, really. It wanted to look, it wanted you to examine, it wanted you to see so that you could make decisions based upon what is right, what is, that, what is, what needs to happen. It doesn't care about, okay, you want this? Cool. This is what you need to do though. You want this relationship? Is it balanced? Is it harmonious? Is it working? No, it's got to go. 
I don't care that it, that you love it. I don't care that this is what you thought that was for you. There's something else out there for you. And if you looked at it from a different perspective, and if you intuitively connected with your intuition, you would have heard those signals, you would have heard the call, and you would have been open and honored. You would have honored it by letting it go or building upon it. But it just, it requires a nut, the next level of you. It requires the next version of you. And you making the decision based upon what is for your highest and greatest good trickles off into how other people, how they respond to you. And sometimes they're not going to bring the best version of themselves because they're, they don't have all that it takes or they're weak or whatever. But that doesn't stop you from doing it. And that you should do it because you're finding your tribe. Mercury also moving through the sign of Jupiter is going, to, I'm sorry, through the sign of Sagittarius is going to help you to connect with like-minded people. And you'd be surprised what those people would look like. Chances are they're going to be from different backgrounds, different cultures, different belief systems, different spirituality, different levels of studying, but and different levels of wisdom, different types of wisdom. Not everybody has the same type of wisdom. But they have the same thinking as you. They have the same vibe, vibration as you. And you guys have to connect in order to learn from each other. So many people, they'll see something different from them. And instead of honoring their heart and honoring their intuition, they immediately tell it no. They immediately, you know, stunt it. Because it doesn't, they don't recognize it. It's foreign to them. But just because it's foreign doesn't mean that it doesn't serve a purpose, a divine purpose for your life. So sometimes say yes to different. If it feels right, follow that intuition. Mars shows you how you should be acting. Mars shows you the way that you should be acting. Mars moving through the final phases of Pisces is saying, follow your intuition, follow your vibe, your vibration. What is accepting you? What is loving you unconditionally? What is giving to you? What is almost sacrificial for you? What is kind of sawing its arm off for you and giving itself to you? Why are you saying no to that? Why are you then picking things and choosing things that are running away from you when there are things here that are trying to give to you and trying to teach you not only a, a lesson here in this moment, but for your life? I don't get why people chase things that, you know, don't want them, you know? So it's, it's, yeah. Um, the other thing is that the sun on the 20th trining Neptune is nearing into a nice trine with Uranus, which we're going to be feeling next week. And I see this as vision and dreaming and potential and honoring your personal path and honoring your sensitivity and honoring your personal light. Um, I see you sharing ideals. There's another thing too with the with the with the new moon. I'm sorry, the full moon. Mercury is going to conjunct Jupiter. Jupiter is all about abundance and expansion. Sun moves into the sign of Capricorn. This is connecting with people and sharing these thoughts, these ideal, uh, these ideas and ideals. This dream, this conversation that needs to be had with a different person, someone different from you, someone that expands your world. Not in a way for you to judge them, but for you to be open to them and accept them. And also these aspects within yourself, maybe it's not another person, but maybe it's an, an aspect of you within you that you need to look at and acknowledge and accept and explore instead of you looking at it and judging it and being like, no, I don't accept this because this is different. This is foreign. This is a side of me I didn't even know. Or this is a career that I didn't even you know, I'm afraid of, or maybe this is new territory and I don't know if I can do it. Fucking try, at least try. You have what it takes. Sun moving through the sign of Capricorn, finally, on the 21st, is going to help you to build upon these opportunities that have been trying to come in. Hopefully you said yes to some things. Some of us have been so bombarded with, with um, opportunities and, you know, things that have been showing up and things, you know, travel, even myself, I've had to say no to some stuff or I haven't even responded to some things because I've been so focused on other stuff, like my own healing, my own distraction, and just kind of grounding myself because just like you guys, I feel kind of caught in the wave and I have to ground myself, I have to center myself because something's going on within me and around me. So I'm under the same influence as you guys. But when sun moves to the sign of Capricorn, starting on the 21st and then the full moon on the 22nd, this is the time really to kind of work on, you know, creating the bones for yourself and getting back to the work, getting back to the grind, getting back to your work, um, you know, putting the pedal to the metal, even if, even as Mars is moving to the sign of Pisces, because it's connecting you again to this heightened ideal, this heightened idealization that you have for your life. And Capricorn is all about building the bones, building the structure, having rules, having routine in order to create what you need as a person, as an individual, to thrive 
to give back, to provide for yourself, your legacy, et cetera, et cetera, to feel safe in this world. This is when the power comes in your hands and ultimately, what are you gonna do with it? So I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. If this makes sense to you, then you know, share this video with your friends, share this video with your family, with your tribe on social media. That's a great way to say thank you or give it the thumbs up button. And stay tuned because I've got another video coming, probably the full moon and the sign of cancer, the details of that. And there's other things that have been coming through to me last night that I must talk about. It's a must. All right, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.